And this semester, I've had the privilege of being the team lead for the Social Entrepreneurship Project. Um, and so what the Social Entrepreneurship Project focuses on is taking organizations that are making great social impact all over the world and trying to help them improve and increase the impact that they're capable of making. And now, I'm going to let the team go a little bit more in depth into what the project has actually entailed. Uh, I want to talk about the people right now. So I'd like to start initially by thanking um, our mentor, Tom A and our wonderful inventors, Reggie and Rochelle Witten, along with Sister Rosemary Narumbe. Uh, the help and the support that they've offered us this semester has allowed us to make the great impact that we believe we'll be able to make. Uh, along with that, the people that you're about to hear present are some of the most passionate, driven, and intelligent people I've had the opportunity to work with. Uh, it's really been an honor to spend time watching them grow and develop this semester and really pour themselves into this project. Um, I've enjoyed every moment, at least in retrospect, uh, and I think you all will enjoy listening to them talk about their work. So without further ado, here is Team Sewing Hope. Between 1990 and 2006, over 34,000 Ugandan women were abducted by the Lord's Resistance Army. Today, they return to their homes only to find that they lack the education and necessary skills needed to obtain work that they, to support themselves and their children. Sister Rosemary Nurumbe has dedicated her life to ensure that these women can become self-sufficient. Since becoming head of St. Monica's Tailoring School in 2002, she has helped over 2,000 women by providing them with a safe haven where they can escape their past, as well as teaching them marketable skills such as tailoring that they can use to obtain work after graduation. Sewing Hope is a 501c3 nonprofit based in Oklahoma City that supports Sister Rosemary's mission through the production and sale of pop tab purses, just like these. The Sewing Hope collects pop tabs and other inputs in Oklahoma City and sends them to Uganda, where the women then use them to make pop tab purses. Sewing Hope then takes these purses back to the United States, where they are sold, sending the resulting profit back to Uganda, where it's reinvested into the school and used to pay the women a part-time wage. This semester, our team has been working to find a way to help Sewing Hope increase its social impact. And through our research, we have found that by utilizing new paths to market, formalizing its supply chain, and adopting a new demand-based product mix, Sewing Hope will be able to increase its social impact by 32% by as soon as the year 2016. Hi, my name is Savannah Ames. I'm a junior philosophy and international studies major from Houston, Texas. Hello, I'm, Hello. <laughs> I'm Haley Powell, an international business and entrepreneurship senior from Durant, Oklahoma. Hello, my name is Bree Powells. I'm a mechanical engineering senior from Kansas City, Missouri. Hi, I'm Arshayla Jordan, an entrepreneurship and venture management senior from Dallas, Texas. Our team lead is Cooper Lund. Our founders are Sister Rosemary Narumbe and Reggie and Rochelle Witten. And our team mentor is Tom Apel, and we are Team Sewing Hope. With each purse that Sewing Hope sells, they increase their social impact. Currently, Sewing Hope offers six miles of purses, each ranging from $35 to $200 in price. Women are paid per purse an amount ranging from $2.75 to $33, depending on how, much, how long the purse takes to make, as well as its difficulty. And currently, each purse yields them a profit of between $20 and $140 to be reinvested in St. Monica's. In the year 2014, Sewing Hope is able to sell 200 of these purses <coughs> generating a profit of $78,000 that it was able to reinvest in Uganda. However, during this time, its use of limited marketing channels, an inefficient supply chain, as well as a product mix that was not a non-demand-based product mix, not only prevented them from reaching out to new consumers, but prevented them from satisfying current demand due to production caps, as well as an inability to correctly guess what customers would be willing to buy. In this presentation, we'll show you that by fixing these three problems, Sewing Hope will be able to increase its impact by 32% by as soon as the year 2016. First, we will demonstrate how by utilizing new marketing channels such as social media and boutiques, Sewing Hope will be able to add 365 sales by reaching out to new consumers. Next, we will show how by formalizing its supply chain using shipping methods such as UPS and DAX couriers, 
you, uh, Sewing Hope would be able to satisfy 300 purses worth of current demand that was previously unable to fulfill. And finally, we will show that by using a planned product mix, Sewing Hope will not only be able to fulfill another 300 purses in previously unfulfilled demand by being able to predict what customers will buy, but also be able to do so more, profit more profitably. All told, we projected that this will lead to a profit of $103,000, which Sewing Hope could use, to, which St. Monica's could use to triple girls' wages, as well as finance its own expansion plans. So with that being said, here's Haley to discuss how by using new marketing channels, Sewing Hope will be able to increase its demand. Thank you. As Savannah stated, we will be able to improve, yes, <laughs> improve their, no, okay. As Savannah stated, they'll be able to improve their They'll be able to do something. Hold on. All right. Sewing Hope has a larger market than they're currently reaching. Sewing Hope has a customer base based off of their Facebook demographics and their um, based off of their Facebook demographics and their um, event attendees. They have a customer base of women between the ages of 30 and 59 who make over $60,000 per year. The people in this market include 22.2 million women that are in the United States. After conducting a survey of 87 women, we were able to find that one in three of them are interested in buying Sewing Hope purses. This gives us a total market of 7.4 million women. Characteristics of this market include that they buy 1.4 billion dollars worth of purses every year and on an individual basis they spend twelve hundred dollars on charities although they have such a large market that they can reach they're only selling around twelve hundred purses per year they can increase their sales by 354 purses by implementing new marketing strategies in 2014 they made an additional 500 sales they're going to five different events with sister rosemary but we believe they can expand their growth by taking our four recommendations. The first two recommendations are easy to implement and can be done from their office. The first one is social media. By posting on Facebook once per day for one year, they would be able to make an additional 154 sales. This is based on a 2% conversion rate of interactions between their Facebook and their followers. Second, if they have promotions on their website, they'll be able to reach an additional 36 sales. Um, this, we recommend that they do 10 sales per year, and this can span from a 20% sale to free shipping. Their next recommendations are a bit more difficult to implement and are, um, they require planning. So the first one would be events. If they had three more events each year, they would be able to expand 125 more sales. For example, they're going to be going to a gala in New York City this year. So by doing more events like this without Sister Rosemary, they'll be able to expand by a lot. Second, if they add boutiques as a wholesaler, they'll be able to expand their sales by 30. This is based on only adding five additional boutiques at six purses per boutique. Overall, that'll give them an additional 845 sales, and this is based off a small estimate where they'll be able to grow each year, making this number larger. Now that I've spoken about how they can increase demand, here is Breek to discuss how they'll be able to supply it. Thank you, Haley. Right, so to meet some of the demand that Haley just talked about, Sewing Hope's gonna need to make some changes to their supply chain. So let's take a look at what their supply chain looks like right now. As it stands, they collect their tabs for free thanks to a partnership with Anheuser-Busch that's ongoing. They buy their thread from various craft and hobby stores around Oklahoma, and they market and sell all of their purses right here in the United States. As soon as they've gathered all those inputs, they put them in suitcases and fly them over to Gulu in northern Uganda on commercial airlines. Once they've gotten there, they take those inputs, distribute them out to the various women they have working for them, who turn them into purses, who return them are paid for their work, and then those finished purses are sent back to the United States, again through suitcases on commercial flights. We found two major issues with this setup. First, 
They're severely limiting how many inputs they can actually get to Gulu by using this suitcase method. While it does work for the current scale, uh, for example, in 2014, they sent approximately a million tabs to Gulu. We anticipate that by 2016, they'll need to send upwards of 1.6 million tabs to Gulu. We don't believe that the, with the way they're working right now and the amount of suitcases they send, that they can keep doing this without incurring significant extra bag costs. So our solution is that they include UPS as a shipping option. Not only does this essentially remove their cap in terms of how many inputs they can send to Gulu, but it also makes them a lot more flexible in terms of when and how many inputs they want to send to Gulu. Our second issue is that once the inputs have been given to the women and turned into the purses, they're now a value added item. And when you send these back in suitcases on commercial flights, that's being a little risky with the law. So our solution is that they need to formalize this part of their process. Here's how they go about doing that. First, they need to register as a formal business in Uganda. Then they need to fill out a number of forms that are relatively straightforward that will turn them into a legal exporter from Uganda to the United States. And then uh, we've actually identified a shipper for them already. So these are our two main solutions. So let's look into what this will look like in terms of cost effect on their overall supply chain. To make this as clear as possible, we're going to look at their three main parts of their supply chain on a unit basis. That means that all these costs you're going to see up here are per purse. So as it stands right now, on average, they pay approximately $15.50 per finished purse. That includes buying the inputs, getting them all together, sending them to Uganda, and then sending the finished purses back. So let's look at that first step, collecting inputs. As I said earlier, tabs have been free and will continue to be free for the foreseeable future. However, in terms of thread, we've actually identified another distributor that has told us that we can cut their thread costs by 66%, which is right around $6 per purse, which is huge. Next, we're going to look at the US to Uganda shipping. As they scale, we believe that including UPS is going to save them more and more money but based on 2016 projections, it should save them a little over a dollar per purse. Now on the Uganda to the US leg of the trip, they're actually gonna see some added costs. This is due to having to actually pay a shipper, paying tariffs, insurance, and other associated costs. To be clear, this does not have to do with the upfront costs, which are actually pretty low. Also, on the overall supply chain, we've actually been able to save them a significant amount of money. So to wrap up, here's what we've done with their supply chain. We've taken off any sort of cap on their inputs for the foreseeable future. We've made them more flexible in terms of how and when they want to send inputs. And we've mitigated some of that legal risk, all while cutting up to 35% of their costs. Now that we've talked about how we're going to supply all these purses and get the inputs over there, um, our Shayla is going to talk about how we can take that supply and best use it to make not only as much profit as possible, but make as much social impact with those sales as we can. Rochelle? Thank you, Breek. So Breek just talked about formalizing the supply chain, and now I'm gonna talk about how optimizing the product mix will allow so Sewing Hope to capitalize on the increased inputs and outputs, which will increase profits, therefore increasing social impact. So with the new product mix, Sewing Hope will be able to reach demand. Currently, Sewing Hope sells six purses, the Concy, the Monica, the Eve, the Rosemary, the Beach Bag, and the Tote. So before, Sewing Hope just guessed on what the customer would like to buy, which led them to constantly being sold out, unsatisfied customers due to lack of specific items and low profitability. But with a new product mix, which we based on survey information, and we surveyed over 100 people, Historical sales from the 2014 and beginning of 2015 and product profitability, we know that if we sold 100 purses, we know that with the current product mix, they would make 6,521 in profit and 9,041 in profit with the, with the new product mix. So with the new product mix, Sewing Hope would gen generate 2,500 more dollars with every additional 100 purses sold. So Sewing Hope can reach their full profit potential with the three CCEW recommendations, 
which are to one, increase brand awareness, two, formalize the supply chain, and three, optimize the product mix. So if Sewing Hope grows her sales from the increased brand awareness, fulfills the sales with the increase in inputs and outputs due to formalizing the supply chains, and capitalizes on themselves with the new product mix, we know that in 2018, profit would be $122,356. We base this projection off of the profit assumptions of, six, of uh, the unfulfilled demand of $600, the yearly percentage increase, and cost, cost assumptions being thread cost and shipping cost. So as production increases, women's annual income will also increase, as well as Sewing Hope's profit will increase. So with the increase in inputs and outputs, more purses will be created, which means that women's annual income will triple by 2018. Currently, the woman's annual income is $93, but by 2018, women's annual income will be $268, which means that women will be able to send two of their kids to primary school for $100. For Sorry. Sorry. For organization impact, <laughs> women for organization impact, Sewing Hope could build two additional two additional schools for fifty five thousand, or build eight water projects and provide clean water for eight thousand women and children in northern Uganda. And now that we created an efficient business plan for Sewing Hope, here are some next steps to and for them to implement for the supply chain. For the supply chain, Sewing Hope should form a, start formalizing the supply chain to increase inputs and outputs, as well as use a formal wage structure to increase women's annual income. For the marketing, they should start implementing sales and expand social media to increase brand awareness, as well as create partnerships with boutiques to increase sales. For the product mix, they should use the new product mix to increase profitability. We've had a great time working with Sewing Hope and helping them create an efficient business plan. We've also enjoyed staying countless nights in the CCEW office, working on hard tasks and staying over our meeting time. Thank you, Cooper. But the most, re <laughs> but the most rewarding experience was being able to meet Sister Rosemary in person and being able to t hear her talk about St. Monica and Sewing Hope. So again, we are sowing hope, sowing hope one purse at a time. Thank you, and we'll now open up the floor for questions.